Hi, this is Alex Tanku from University Polytechnica of Bucharest and in this video we will try to demonstrate the capabilities of the wireless transport emulator. The wireless transport emulator can be used for simulating wireless transport networks in the context of SDN. It is able to simulate wireless transport devices and links between them. The wireless transport devices expose the information models proposed by ONF such as TR532, the microwave information model, and TR512, which is the core information model. The project is open source and its code can be found on GitHub. The wireless transport emulator has different components. It has two JSON files that are taken as an input by the simulator. For example, the topology JSON contains the topology that we want to simulate and the config JSON contains several parameters that are used by the device, such as the IP address of the SDN controller where we want to connect our topology. Another important component of the WTE is the default values mediator or DVM. The DVM was developed for the wireless transport project SDN proof of concept organized by ONF. It is basically an open NUMA NetConf server implementation that is used to expose the aforementioned models. We also have a Python framework that glues everything together. Each element is represented as a Docker container which runs inside a Linux image along with the DVM. The DVM will expose the netconf interface to the SDN controller. We can have also a Docker network associated with each Docker container in order to achieve network is isolation. The interfaces that we want to simulate will be represented as Linux interfaces inside each container. This is how the internal details of a network element look like. Based on the core model and microwave model, we have several types of ob objects. For example, for a narrow interface, we will have a microwave physical section object and then several other layers that will connect in the end uh, to either another air interface or to an Ethernet physical interface. All these interfaces and these objects are represented inside each Docker container. The link between two simulated devices is done through virtual Ethernet tunnels or virtual Ethernet pairs. This has an advantage that we can pass traffic between the Docker containers. In order to emulate these link characteristics to be such as a wireless transport link, we have several attributes. Each Docker container has inside the microwave information model several attributes that are related to the link characteristics. For example, the TX channel bandwidth influences the TX capacity for that uh, interface. Also, the current modulation used influences the TX capacity of the interface. We have here an example for calculating the TX capacity. We multiply the TX channel bandwidth with the logarithm of the current modulation and the current code rate, which is typically around 90%, and uh, this is uh, influenced by the redundancy that is added to the code in order to detect errors and correct them and we also multiply this by uh, 0 0.85 which is the typical symbol rate for wireless transport devices for example if we have a TX channel bandwidth of 56 megahertz and a modulation of uh, 1k qam we will have an expected capacity of 428 megabits per second. This will be translated into 
Linux commands that will limit this, uh, the bandwidth of the specific interface to this value. This is the topology that we will use to simulate in order to demonstrate the capabilities of the WTE. We have a simple ring topology which consists of three network elements. Each network element will have two air interfaces that we can see here and two Ethernet physical interfaces that can be used to inject traffic in the network. I have here a virtual machine, actually two virtual machines. One will be used for simulating the wireless transport network and the other one contains an ODL controller which the devices will use in order to connect to. So for starting the emulator we have the two JSON files as an input. This is the topology file that describes the, the topology. We have three network elements with several layers of interfaces microwave physical section, microwave section, Ethernet container and so on. And in the bottom we will have the links between those network elements. The config JSON contains some parameters that the simulator will use. For example, we have here the IP address and port of the SDN controller. Now we can run this simulator. The topology is now running and we have a command line interfaces, interface that waits for commands. For example, we can, if, we, we, if we are looking in the ODL controller, none of the elements are mounted yet. So if we issue a mount all command, all the net simulated network elements will be talking now with the SDN controller. For example, now if we want to pass traffic, we can create a topology um, using the reroute application that was developed for the fourth wireless transport SDM proof of concept. So if we send here a request that will create forwarding constructs between the network elements. You can see that the request was sent successfully. And now we can use the command xterm to open a terminal inside each Docker container. So this is the terminal associated with network element 3 and this one is the terminal associated with network element 1. We can now start passing traffic between the elements through the ring topology. So from network element 1 we start an iperf server and for network element 3 we will start an iperf client that will send the traffic to the server. We can see now that the traffic is passing in this ring topology. We have approximately 100 megabits per second bandwidth between these. For example now we will try to issue commands from the ODL controller in order to modify the bandwidth between the network elements. So now we will change the capacity of the first air interface of network element 1. We go here to configuration And now if we, if we will modify the TX channel bandwidth to be as in our example, so 50 56 megahertz and a modulation of 1K QAM, we will apply this. Then we will need to 
do the same thing for the other air interface. So 56 megahertz and 1K QAM. If you are looking at the traffic again, we see that we still have 100 megabits per second because now the bottleneck is represented by network element 2 and network element 3. So if we go now to network element 2, we do the same thing. We modify the TX channel bandwidth and the modulation in order to have larger bandwidth so 56 megahertz channel and a modulation of 100 1k quam sorry we need to do this for the secondary interface as well so channel bandwidth of 56 megahertz and a modulation of 1k quam if we look at the traffic nothing should happen right now because the bottleneck will be represented by network element 3 and indeed this is the case we still have 100 megabits per second throughput now we need to modify the throughput for the other air interfaces of network element 3. So if we go here to the configuration, we can set a channel bandwidth of 56 megahertz and a modulation of 1k QAM. We can see that now the traffic that is passing between network element 1 and network element 3 increased to almost 428 megabits per second as it was here in our example. So the theoretical value is almost achieved here in the emulator. Some other capabilities of WTE are represented by the ability to generate random alarms. For example, if we go into the ODL controller here in the alarms, we can see that alarms are, have already been generated. For example, the air interface 2 from network element 3 has an RSL is exceeded alarm. This allows SDN application developers to test um, the, this interaction with the simulated wireless transport network uh, in an easier manner than it uh, would be with a um, real network element because it is easier to, to generate alarms here in the simulator. This concludes our demonstration of the capabilities of the wireless transport emulator. Thank you.